Hello everyone. Uh, today's lesson we're going to cover uh, some more of the mesh tools menu and the mesh menu. So we're going to look at the multi-cut tool, we're going to look at some of the options for inserting edge loops, and then we're going to look at under the mesh menu, filling holes, the mirror tool, smooth and reduce, combine and separate versus boolean tools, and uh, a little bit more on the boolean operations, and then the duplicate special tool. So nice little combination again as you get started in Maya with some basics for 3D modeling working poly with primarily polygonal based uh, objects for this particular tutorial. So let's get started. We're going to start off with a multi-cut tool. So I'm just going to bring a cube into my scene, um, frame it here so we can see it really well. I'm going to add some subdivision to this. So I'm going to go to my uh, attributes here to the poly cube. And I'm going to add uh, four subdivisions each there. There we go. So that gives us a little something to work with. Uh, and now I'm going to go to the modeling toolkit up here at the top right. I've got my modeling toolkit and um, some great shortcuts we've looked at in the past. Up at the top here, we can go with uh, object mode or vertex mode or edge or face or the multi tool. Uh, this is UV editing down the road. But there's some great tools here. As you can see, this is sort of like a shortcut to the most commonly used mesh tools. Uh, so we're going to look at the multi-cut tool. So if I click on the multi-cut tool, we have some um, settings here. You can play around with the smooth angle. That's like how much as it cuts, uh, how smooth the cuts are, subdivisions within those cuts. Uh, you can increase all of that stuff. And then we'll look at the slice tool options on it here. So the multi-cut tool allows you to cut new edges uh, and faces really from uh, vertexes or from edges. So I can click on a vertex, click on another vertex, and boom, I have now cut that. If I actually hit return, you'll see I have a new edge now. Um, and I could, I don't have to just do one at a time. I could actually click multiples. I could go through here um, and click on multiples and hit return and boom, I have all that. Now, just as a side note, you do want to avoid making triangles in Maya. Um, we'll talk about this down the road, but quads are preferable. Quads are, are um, faces that have four sides. Anything above four sides is known as an n-gon. Those are a little better than triangles, but ultimately when you get to UV editing and especially if you get into character design and manipulating these meshes, um, you're going to want to stay away from triangulation. It can lead to problems down the road. But I'm just demonstrating what the multi-cut tool can do here. So it's fine for just this general demonstration. Okay, So I can go through there and cut that. And boom, uh, I can cut some really interesting patterns. So you need to be able to you know, play around uh, down the road. Now I have all these different faces I could select. right? So now I have a face. Uh, if I extrude that. I can cut out a shape that wasn't there before. So it's really powerful for being able to kind of like cut out designs. You could really think about how powerful this is too as you subdivide this object more and more. Uh, and then you could create like round shapes and all sorts of different fun stuff, right? So the multi cut tool, uh, very good for all of that. Um, and then you can also, um, let me grab the multi cut tool again. If I hold down shift, you'll see it actually centers up really nicely. So holding down shift is going to give you really clear um, kind of cuts whatever edge you're working with in half. And I can also click on these points and then move them around, which is really nice after the fact. Once you roll onto it, you can kind of move them around a little bit, which is great. Um, so I can hit OK on that. And then I could still maybe even like connect that to that and hit OK. So remember that shift is going to allow you to kind of like find the center of any edge that you're working with, which is really handy sometimes. Maybe I need to go from there and um, whoop, nope, hit return and maybe then there and there and hit return. So shift will find that center for you. And then, like I said, you can always click on it and move it around as well um, before you commit to it, which is really nice. All right. Uh, let's see. The next thing we're going to look at is how the multi-cut tool can create what's called edge loops. Um, so I'm going to undo all of that real quick. Or edit. Let me redo that. There we go. Okay, so an edge loop, if I hold down control on my keyboard while having the multi-cut tool active, you'll see my tool switches. And now it'll create a loop around the whole thing. So if I click right now, and I pan around this, you'll see it actually created an extra 
uh, subdivision line that goes all the way around. So just kind of cut all those faces in half. And that works as well if I go here and click vertically, it'll do the same thing, which is really cool, right? I can also hold control and shift and then it kind of like snaps at 10 degree intervals. See how it's kind of like snapping perfectly. I'm just like moving along and it kind of pops along for me. So if I want to be able to have nice even subdivisions. This insert edge loop tool, I can't tell you how often I use this, especially when you start working with like round or more organic shapes and you need to add subdivision that wraps all the way around it. So really keep that in mind. I believe there's actually an a separate insert edge tool. Yeah, you can do a separate insert edge loop under mesh tools up here, um, but I love using the multi-cut tool and then just holding down control and control shift on that because um, it really helps. All right. So there we go. I hit return. Now I have all this extra subdivision from my uh, multi-cut tool and the insert edge loop tool. All right, last thing I want to show you is that within the multi-cut tool, you also have this slice tool. It's kind of a different feature. I'm going to go around to this side where there's less um, subdivision going on. Um, but basically, I can go to the, the slice tool has some extra features, but I'm just going to show you how if I just take my multi-cut tool and I click outside the shape, like if I click up here and then I click down here, I can actually like slice my object in half right now. Uh, and if I want to adjust the position of this, if I middle click on like my scroll wheel, I can still move the slice angle around. I can't really like change the position of the points, but if I hit return and you look, it actually just sliced all the way through my object, which is pretty awesome. Um, that can give me a really nice kind of slice cut that's uh, all the way through, right? Now, if I undo that, if I do ignore back faces, it's only going to slice through what's currently visible. It's kind of like uh, camera-based selection um, when you're turning on and off with your just selection tool. So if I click here and click here and hit return, now it has sliced through the front and the top, but not through the back because I couldn't see it. So that re ignore back faces will only slice through what's currently visible in your viewport. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Now, uh, the delete faces will actually like delete. Uh, check this out. If I do that and return, it'll delete one half of it. Now, it leaves a big open hole. Um, you might wonder why it's black on the inside and gray on the outside. Whenever you see black, you're seeing the inside of the model. It's kind of a no-no. You don't want to have open holes. Um, and you don't want to like you know adjust your mesh so much that you're pulling the inside out through the outside, so always keep your eye on that. Um, but now that I have a big open hole, I can fix this very easily by going up to the top uh, mesh panel and go to fill hole. Oh, but I'm sorry, I have to actually get off my multi-cut tool for a second and go to object mode and just click on it. Then I can go to mesh and fill hole, and there we go. Now, that's one big face. I'd have to subdivide that further if I needed to do more to it, but obviously the insert edge loop would allow you to do that, or the multi-cut tool would allow you to do that. But very cool like way to kind of like slice your object in half, right? Uh, the other feature you can do with the multi-cut tool and the slicing feature is I can do extract faces. I really like this one. Um, so I can make an object, and then again, I can do the cut through it check this out. It actually slices it and then slightly moves them away from each other, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, you can decide how far they move. Uh, 0.5 inches is basically how much it moved it there. Now, you, this is all one still one object. If you look, if I select this, that's the P cube there. So I have selected that. Now, if you want to separate these into two pieces, then you have to go up to mesh and separate. You see now I have a group of one side and then the other. And then I can click on each of these and do mesh fill hole and click on that one and mesh fill hole. And now I have two pieces and that's really awesome because like, you know, I can move these slightly apart from each other. Uh, this is a really useful one for sometimes uh, you create one big design and then you need to slice it up into a bunch of parts. So a bunch of stuff hidden inside that multi-cut tool. You can probably see why a lot of people use it and why it's there in the modeling toolkit because it has all these different um, built-in features really which were really awesome okay let me undo all of that all right cool so next uh, I've already shown you the fill hole uh, this works in lots of situations sometimes you just mess up and you have a bunch of faces and you happen to hit the delete and you open up a hole in your object like oh no what do I do what do I do uh, very easy just go to uh, mesh and fill hole Whoop! I have to be in again I have to choose my uh, 
object mode, choose the object, and then mesh fill hole, right? But that's kind of cool. Like, uh, you know, maybe I didn't want to have four different um, polygons there. Sometimes there's some issues. So like sometimes if I do this and say I do an extrude and then I do, um, well, that time it worked. But sometimes um, when you do inner extrudes and stuff like that. So let me try that again. Well, it's extruding just fine. But sometimes you don't want to extrude a bunch of faces at the same time. Um, so I could just delete these and then go to mesh. I'm sorry, go into object mode and then go to mesh and then fill hole. And maybe I would needed to create a window here. Um, oh, let me undo that real quick. There we go. And go to face and choose that. And then I could go ahead and extrude that inward. And I'm only really extruding that one face to work with now. Um, you know, so something to think about. Um, lots of different options there. Sometimes when I'm creating windows and things like that, I want to create a little window frame and then um, maybe extrude it even further from there. So uh, fun to be able to open up holes and be able to fill holes very easily using that mesh tool. And you can create some complex forms and shapes, right? Okay, uh, aside from that, I want to show you um, mirroring. So let me kind of um, adjust this guy a little bit more. I'm just going to kind of modify it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and smooth my object. Oh, let me go to object mode. Let me continue here and save. Uh, let's smooth this. Let's give this like two. There you go. Um, and actually, you know what? The smoothing didn't work out on this. I'm going to just do a whole different object real quick. I'm going to go ahead and do a cylinder, and that's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and smooth this guy. There we go. Let's do subdivision of two. OK, cool. I'm going to continue. So now I've got this guy that I'm working with. Um, let's look at mirroring tools. So again, uh, up under Mesh, um, we have a mirroring tool. You can click on this and bring up some sub panels. So say I want to mirror, what axis do I want to mirror this? I'm basically going to like duplicate this object and mirror it in the X direction, the Y direction, or the Z direction. So let's see, let's just do X direction for right now. So I'm going to do mirror. And what's cool is this little tool allows me to decide like how much do I want to mirror. And it all becomes one object afterwards, which is really fun. So I can kind of like pull this out and you can see how it's like mirroring one object into the other, right? I can reduce it or expand it outward. So it's a really nice little kind of useful tool. I can even like tilt it. Uh, gives you a lot of options here for how you're going to merge these. Now watch out, you don't want to open up big holes like that. And you want to watch out for kind of like crinkly intersections. Um, so it's a powerful tool, but use it wisely. Um, and don't give yourself a bunch of headaches and a bunch of triangulation in the process if you can help it. But yeah, some really fun stuff for being able to mirror two sides. Like maybe these are two eyeballs on a robot or something like that. This comes in handy for bilateral symmetry quite a bit. A lot of people will only like model half of their character and then they'll just use the mirror tool um, to mirror it in the opposite direction that they want, which is really cool. And I love the little interactive handle there for how you mirror things, right? So um, let me undo that real quick. Uh, you know, if I had come in here and um, let me go back to my selection tool, do some faces here, and maybe I had um, extruded a few things out here. Let's just go ahead and whoop. there we go. give you a slightly more interesting model to work with here. There we go. All right, now let's smooth that once. Three. There we go. Ooh, that kind of went a little wonky. Anyway, that'll work. It'll give me something a little more dynamic to work with. So if I go back to object mode here and select this object and then go to mesh and mirror again, let's try it in maybe like the Z depth this time. So mirror, and then there we go. You know, now I'm getting some of those features standing out of how this is mirroring. You know, you can adjust the one, but really useful tool, again, for just kind of like duplicating one object into a direction. But when you're done, it's still all one object, right? So that's kind of cool. It's all merged uh, back into one object for you. If I look at this in x-ray mode, you can see 
not like they're just shoved into each other, they have actually been merged. This is very similar to what I'm going to show you in a little bit here on Boolean tools. So let me turn off X-ray. Cool. Um, so I have shown you how you can smooth an object, right? Well, you can also reduce that smoothing. Um, so I can smooth something, but I can also go up here to mesh and I can reduce my smoothing. So I can say, let's reduce it by 50%. And you can see it took away a bunch of that subdivision. So sometimes if you over smooth an object and you've got way too much subdivision to work with, just know up under mesh, you also have a reduce option and you can reduce that by whatever percentage you want. You know, I could say 75 instead of 50. You got to watch out. You start going uh, beyond what the original was, and it's really going to start kind of like messing with your mesh. So, you know, I had only smoothed that a little bit, so I only needed to cut that in half for this particular object. Okay. Uh, now, I want to help you to understand the difference between, uh, I'm going to undo a bunch of this. Um, I'm going to show you the difference between combining and sep being able to combine or separate an object and then the Boolean tools. So, you know, I can always take an object like this and I can duplicate it. I just did Command D or Control D on a PC and I can move this over uh, and very similar to kind of like mirror. I could rotate it around. Um, you know, I'd have to be careful to try to get them exactly right. And I can take these two forms and I can select both of them and I can come up to mesh and I can say combine. Uh, and now when I uh, click on this, it, is, it, it, it clicks just like one object. Now if I actually go over, you'll notice though that um, I do have one cylinder here and that's fine, we're good to go. I have it as one big object and I can click on it and they have been combined. There's also a uh, combine button up here uh, under the poly modeling that you can do. Now I can also, this is not permanent, at any point I can go back to mesh and I can say separate and you'll see now that group has the two different surfaces and again so it's a nice way for like grouping and combining things together if you're going to use the bridge tool you have to kind of combine two objects before you can bridge them all of that fun stuff right now what if i want to actually though like merge these two objects together uh, well then i would use the boolean tool and the boolean tools aren't just merge you can also subtract one from the other or you can do an intersection so i'm going to choose both of these objects again and then over here on the right, you'll see I have Boolean. That's also up under Mesh. There's Booleans as well, and you can ch choose which type of Boolean. So this is a Boolean operation, a mathematical operation that's going to try to merge vertexes together. Because, you know, when I did that combine, a uh, quick way to understand this, when I do combine, if I go to X-Ray, you'll notice the Mesh is still there on the inside. They've just been kind of shoved together and sort of grouped, right? Um, but I'm going to ungroup them. Now, if I do Boolean, watch what happens. So I'm going to go to Boolean. It literally does the math and figures out now that they're merged together, it doesn't need all that stuff on the inside. And it actually tries to merge those points together. And I can choose union. I can choose difference where it subtracted the first one that I selected from the second one that I selected. If I take uh, x-ray off, you'll see that. Or I can do the rarely used intersection, and it only leaves the area left uh, where they intersect. So that's all that's left behind. That actually, I kind of make kind of a neat shape with that. Now, um, these work great, but I often have beginner students that just really overdo it with Booleans. Um, they forget the core uh, extrusion uh, based kind of like modeling techniques and smoothing and using sculpting tools and they end up using Boolean all the time. And I gotta warn you, down the road, uh, Booleans make really weird meshes. Um, they'll be able, if you look closely, there's gonna be a bunch of like triangulation in here. Remember how I said we want to avoid triangulation and try to stick with quads? You're gonna have texture issues down the road where there's just kind of like wrinkly, chunky looking areas when you start adding shaders and textures to this. Um, so really use it with a grain of salt. Don't do Booleans too much uh, or you will pay the price down the road. Trust me. You're going to be like, why is this not working? Or why is this mesh deforming in a weird way when I add a rig to it? Oh, because you built this with Boolean operations. So don't go overboard with it. You know, use Booleans where you need to. They can also, if you ever get into 3D printing, they can cause a lot of problems, uh, mesh problems that have to be fixed with other software. So it's a great tool for certain situations, but don't use it all the time. Don't overdo it. All right. Last but not least, I want to show you the duplicate special tool. Uh, if I go to edit 
and I go down to duplicate special. You know, I can always duplicate something, command D, like I said, and duplicate special is actually command shift D, but I always like to bring up the duplicate special window. So what's great about duplicate special is you can determine how many times it's going to duplicate. And you can also determine like what direction the object will duplicate in. You don't always want it to just duplicate on top of itself uh, 15 times. Maybe you do. Like if I just hit duplicate special right now, I'd have 15 objects all sitting in the same spot and then I could move them manually, right? But what if I change this? If I just want to make 15, but I want to have them move one inch each time and I'm going to put in 15 copies there and duplicate special, whoa. Very cool. Actually, I need to undo that because I think I had a rotation in there as well from the last time I did this. So let me go to duplicate special. Yeah, I had a rotate of 15 degrees. So I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but I wanted to just go on the X and I wanted to duplicate 15 times. There we go. 15 duplicates. Very cool. And these are all just copies. You can see them now in my outline. Now I'm going to undo because I want to show you a really powerful feature of duplicate special is go to edit duplicate special instead of a copy in the geometry type up here choose instance and then duplicate special now watch what happens when i start to modify this object uh, if i go to face mode and i choose whoa, see the selection there i can actually modify the original and it will modify all of them so say i want to extrude that out that is really cool right now you can get some really neat pattern work uh, and I could combine these all into one big object uh, or group, or you could try a Boolean operation on it if you want to, but I don't really need to. I can just keep them separate for right now. But that's really cool when you do the instance option. I honestly always do the instance option because I think it's nice to have that option if I want to modify it down the road. Uh, and I believe it reduces the amount of uh, processing power because it's only like rendering one instead of the others. I, I might be wrong on that, but I think uh, when you have an instance like that, it can be pretty powerful. Okay, so let's go back and just show uh, what happened earlier. Oh, sorry, I've got autosave turned on. Let's go to edit here and go to duplicate special again. Now let's introduce that. Um, I'm going to on the Y. Um, axis I'm gonna bring in 15 degree increments on that and duplicate special now I've got a really cool ring uh, when people are creating like crazy little sea creatures and symmetrical objects this duplicate special comes in handy all the time all the time I want to create little teeth or ribs or something around an object very cool right there's it almost looks like a set of dentures for some weird creature um, so yeah, play around with those different directions that the duplicate special happens in. And then also, last but not least, you can scale as well. So I could have it increase by like three inches. Um, maybe I'll just have it in all directions here, X, Y, and Z, and duplicate special. Whoa, 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 whoa. That made some big stuff. I might have, that was a factor that wasn't inches. So let me uh, undo that and frame. Let's try that again. Sometimes you got to watch out what you do. Uh, let's do by one and X, Y, and Z. Let's see how that does. Oh, that didn't really do much. Let's do like 1.5. Uh, duplicate special 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Little bit better but that's getting really big really fast because each one it's exponential but you can get, see how you can get some really neat results out of that that's almost got like a fractal vibe to it right now as it rotates moves and scales at the same time so have fun with the duplicate special have fun with the boolean operations some of those mesh menu tools and particularly the multi-cut tool very powerful uh, and enjoy thanks for tuning in